gonna proc it now. You're gonna proc it now by Jack Sanderellia. Jack, Jack Sanderellia. Gonna proc it now. You're gonna proc it now. Proc it. Jack Sanderellia. Sanderellia. T. Welcome to the rework of the T Force. Now we going hard because we bumping at the beat source. It's a three course dinner of dudes bringing the news and stats, interviews and casts from the pro scene. So fresh and so clean. Like you're leaning with, I'm in the bot lane. Keep it hot like brand. Practicing his dot game. Right. Give it to you easy like you're Resi in the bot game. Imagine Draven at prime time. Now ulti like LeBlanc can copy that four times. But manlier. Knock it up like now. Fight planning a family. -er. You gotta be tuned in like Sona on the ad wall. Get on the chat call. Can a podcast really be all that? Of course. How do four guys? Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell, and I am back again to host episode 192 of our, well, I would say it's our inaugural five-man show, but for the uh, actual crew it is. So, I am joined by a great group of guys and one girl this week. Dom is with us. Hi. Hi, Dom. Uh, Chira's with us. I'm right here. DeClaude and the new baby's with us. Howdy, howdy. Well, how's, the baby's not here, but in the other room. How's Sandra? She's very well, actually. Well, that's good Cute to hear. as ever. She was and, very outspoken last night. Yes, she was. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, for the first time in T-Force podcast history, Days Untold, finally joining us. Hi. Yay. I am, I am not going to make you get into anything about yourself unless you really, really want to. She wants no, to. I'm good. Do you want to totally do you want to talk about who you are and where you come from? No, I don't care. No one cares. You, no, no one cares. <laughs> so, Daze well, is in now, the League of Legends community. Yeah. Well, Daze is now going to join us <laughs> as the fifth member. I'm just ignoring you. Um, from this point fo from this point forward. So, as we move in, we're going to do some quick news and we're going to jump into listener questions for this episode. We're going to toss Daze. I like I said this one's called Trial by Fire. Because I'm going to make her answer every single question and start every single question off. I'm not actually that mean, but I think that'd be hilarious. So, I had to do that. You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I had to, but when we started, you know, when I started, it was you, me, and sometimes Soter. Right. Well, if you guys if you guys want to get into the T-Force community, join us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash T-Force podcast, facebook.com forward slash T-Force podcast. You can also join us in-game in the in-game chat channel T-Force. Uh, a lot of us haven't been talking there recently because the chat box is so small, it's very hard to have a conversation, but please join really in the auto-join. They are fixing that. Uh, if you would like to go buy a t-shirt, tinyurl.com forward slash T-Force shirts. Again, all this stuff is on the website. Battle Arena has not been going on recently, but if you want to join it, the information is on trinityforcepodcast.com. Com. Only reason Battle Arena has not been going on is because Spectator is broken. And because of that, if you guys were here last night, well, I guess a couple of nights ago because of when this podcast actually comes out, we played the t LCS rundown, guys. But Spectator was so broken, you could hardly see if the game was going on. And I will say, we did lose. Spoiler oh, yeah. alert. I mean, but we are going to rematch them, all of us, because we, we talked about it and we're all bad and uh, we're not going to be bad anymore. So that's going to get rematched well, with spectators. That's working. debatable. We're, we're still going to be bad. That's, we're just going to be debatable. less bad. Yeah. Right. Other than that, if you want to support the podcast, please go, please go below the Twitch channel. Please go to tforce.trainingforcepodcast.com and click on the donate button. Any denomination is acceptable. You are helping us help rede redesign the website and move forward with more content for you. Uh, you will see here shortly. I would say after Worlds, we're going to start pushing some more campaigns for you guys to get involved with the Trinity Force community, get involved in helping out. And that will also support us so we can, again, bring you more content. That's the end goal of this these these drives that we're doing and every time we ask for donations so thank you for everything you got going um other than that i was going to say one more news announcement is we have a really awesome big guest coming on here in the next month or or so so i really um I, i'm excited if you've seen us talk about it ghost crawler has said he's going to come on the podcast we don't have a date yet but he's 100 percent confirmed to come on and talk champion design and, and game design with us I like Which how you act awesome. like you're going awesome. to be really sneaky and build up hype, and then you just like do the Break big reveal it. there. And, Immediately, and, uh... people knew if they because <laughs> we what we called, we're like, oh, come Ghost Crawler, come hang out with us, you know, or, or everyone go tweet at him and yada yada. Like, it was pretty obvious what's going on, but he has been confirmed. We just have to get a solid date, and Riot has to uh, confirm all our questions or make sure none of our questions are outside of what they can talk about at any get any given time. So. With that said, we're just going to jump right into League of Legends discussion, discussion and we're going to answer listener questions. Now, Days, like I told you before, it's trial by fire. 
that's that's the first episode of any new person that comes on. So are you ready to answer questions? Uh, yeah, Adam wouldn't even update the doc, so I couldn't even cheat and look at the questions ahead of time. <laughs> I, no, I just wouldn't tell you. They're actually in the bottom. They're, they're all at the, the very bottom. <laughs> I just didn't tell you. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I was being a dick to her earlier because I, I told her it's trial by fire. Just get ready for it. And she just had to scroll down a little bit. So anyway, Optic Dino <laughs> writes in, I am stuck in the bronze division. Should I stick to playing the pro style meta or can kill lanes with the duo ADC Oriana Ari? That's what he's been playing, for example. Work instead of choosing her traditional support. And what better way to start it off days than to <laughs> ask in the bottom lane, how do you feel the bottom lane should played, especially in your bronze division? Um, it's one of those situations that kill lanes can work. Um, they can work at any level if you play them well enough. But especially if you start out playing them in bronze, um, you'll get people by surprise because they won't know how to deal with it and they won't have a lot of experience with it. But as you move up, they'll um, you'll encounter people who are more and more talented and will understand the game better. So you'll have a hard time trying to take advantage of that um, kill potential because you won't have the range. And um, there's a reason that there's a meta. And while... Um, there are ways to get around it. There, that's the optimal way to play the lane. So if you're good enough at whatever you do, you can play any champion in any role. But you're going to encounter it's going to be hotter and hotter as you grow up, as you go up in levels, and you're going to have to understand your weaknesses and play around them. It, did uh, this listener say it was uh, Ari Ori, like double? No, I, I was reading it like you. You might do two marksmen in bot mm -hmm. lane, so like Caitlyn Jinx, just to pick two. Or Oriana okay. and Ari in bot lane, as opposed to the conventional marksman and marksman support. support. Well, I watched that um, chapter one of the Road to Worlds, and I remember them mentioning Fnatic um, made the two AP thing popular when League of Legends was in its infancy in the competitive scene. Uh, so it did that, work competitively. That was, that back was then. top. That was top mid double AP. Oh, that was. Oh, was, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking they were double AP. All right, no, you're, so, Europe. Mind, uh, <laughs> Europe made ADC support popular back when NA was doing all bruisers like Terra, right. Alistar, Jarvan. Oh yeah, yeah. NA NA had uh, NA liked to do mid lane marksmen, or they'd even send them bot too. But the support was supposed to just roam everywhere. You do a lot. Of, you'd see a lot of Janna, Taric, and Alistar. Because those champions could get from A to B quickly and then show up and do call all kinds of ridiculous shit. And that was even before people figured out about the mini Malphite uh, alt that Alistar had going on. Like, they just, I mean, it, it was killing junglers for a while because suddenly a, a support and a jungler would just show up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with Daze in that it'll work, it'll probably work in bronze. Uh, you could probably climb well if you have a duo partner and you practice this and this is something that you enjoy, it's fun. But yeah, what, it will get harder. It, it's a gimmick. It, yeah. It's just like any other gimmick. It's yeah. going to work Jeez. until people Magnets. realize that. My hey. problem, yeah, I, I like I like the advice. I think it's the same advice we've said all the time. Uh, we're kind of going to Dave said is play with what you're comfortable with. We had a duo. A, I think it was a, a wife or excuse me, a husband wife duo that wrote in and said they like to play like Ari Brand or something in the bottom lane. And that was a number of episodes ago. And we said play it if you're comfortable with it, but realize at a certain point. You have to adopt your play style to what other people are playing. And it's a play style, not necessarily champions, but like, well, Days, today you were telling me, I think this is a good lead in. You were saying you can't play Sona anymore, you don't like the new Sona, and you might have to start playing Morgana and Thresh, right? And that yeah. kind of goes off the, the, the same conversation. Yeah, if you if you like any champion enough, you can play it. Um, I mean, I've played Sona since I started playing. I have over 400, 500 games on her. And I played her even when she was weak, but um, just the way she plays now just doesn't really fit into my play style, and she's easily taken advantage of. And, um, you know, at, at this point, I'm just going to, I've decided that I want to kind of look into other champs and main somebody else, and it's the same th type of thing. Um, you know, you can get wherever you want to on whoever. It's just a matter of how much time you're willing to put into overcoming the obstacles that make them a slightly weaker champ. I got a... Like, if you are duoing with somebody, then these outside-the-box strategies uh, can reasonably work. If you are just going into solo queue by yourself, 
I I really disagree with anybody who's trying right. to go for this approach, unless you can really get your team on board for for whatever reason. But keep in mind, you don't have a lot of a, to- a lot of time to explain yourself in champ select and everything like that. And you know, just because you want to do something you know crazy or ridiculous like that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to jive with the rest of the team. And it's pretty selfish of you to like pick. Pick something ridiculous like that when the rest of the group isn't on board. And there, uh, there's something there's something to be said about keeping your team happy is also an effective way of getting the game snowballing. And I would love to see light statistics on it if there is anything, but just like the number of games that end in losses because the team was fighting during champion select, like right. they just they, they were harassing each other, they couldn't well, get along there. Another big problem is if you go down in there and you're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna play Poppy support. Worst case scenario, you know, one of the, probably the worst supports you could pick down there, Poppy will say. I mean, even if she's not that bad, she can jump into a wall. But if you die early, if a level two all in beat you because a Thresh is hooking flay you, whatever it is, and the team rages as GG first blood, the team has gone on tilt because of you. Because you decide to play something out of the box, because you decide to play something that people are not used to playing with. That comes the problem. Like people know how to play with Sona, people know how to play with Zyra. Uh, you know everybody down there. Anybody who has CC, they can play with. But when you have two melee champions, two ADCs, how do you split the farm? How do you engage a team fight? How do you, you know, what happens in mid game when you do dragons? Are you providing a hook to, you know, put somebody out position? What are you doing that a normal support couldn't do and and that's where really oh. you start asking yourself when you get started getting into those weird support scenarios what are you depriving I your team think, at what point in the game i think i'd say mordekaiser is the worst support <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah or nasus i mean even with his w it's not that but, great but that's fine he had he's he's offering some kind of cc and like doing a little wither. bit and then he's got yeah he's got wither and he's got spirit fire armor reduction Mord I mean, just these shoves are not, lane. these are not great but yeah what is mordekaiser gonna do for you as a support <laughs> he's shielding himself He's shielding he you and giving you armor and magic resistance. Making it vulnerable. Yeah. He's do he's bringing <laughs> utility to the team, Dom. I got this. Mordecai's yeah. a support. Let's go. Now, you know what? Um, when you come up with something uh, strange that people might rage at, it's not as bad if you do it in the solo lanes or jungle, but when you are you have a teammate relying on you who's used to playing with the meta, that's when the tilt can really happen pretty hard. So don't be surprised if the your, your own team tilts or rages at you. Um, but I've been pleasantly surprised by some strange solo picks, like Malzahar Jungle. I was like, oh, man, great. This is my promo series, and I get a Malzahar Jungle. And he just destroyed. He, he raped every lane. He went AD, Malzahar Jungle, and he won us the game pretty much single-handedly. So I have an open mind because I've been surprised pleasantly by certain I mean, things like that. But in the duo lane, that's when you got to be Promo careful. series last year, Dom. Remember that the guy was playing like Kazix top or something no, silly. He was, or... he was playing Kazix jungle, and you got so bent out of shape about it. I said, well, just... it, was, it wasn't so bent out of shape. It was like, oh, this guy's playing this thing out of here. Like, <laughs> this, I really don't want to play with this. Him. It's not the meta. And yeah, he he carried so. But this was like, like there's a, there's a there's a fine line on this type of stuff. You like if somebody picks an oddball champion for a specific role, you mm-hmm. can you should. You, I mean, obviously, the higher skill level you get, the more you can trust them and everything. But like. You don't need like you shouldn't just be the person just to try that stuff out, especially in rank. You know. Um, yeah, you know what I learned today? Days is another the de- is another declawed. <laughs> she just likes to play the Osball champions because she doesn't like to play the meta. And I said I'm done. I put my hands up and I walked <laughs> away from Skype this today. I was like, yeah, I didn't even. Uh, you're you're less than eight hours from coming on the show, and you're gonna tell me this now. <laughs> I can't handle this. I Great. told you oh, I, le- I was going to learn uh, Thresh and Morgana or start playing them anyway. There you go. That's meta. Good. Great. The yeah. So you can't are- get more meta than that. The Quad and Days are going to start having competitions who- for who can play the more off meta <laughs> champions. <laughs> yeah. He's going to. I'm going to see Sejuani support come out the, the, the next In- time. It's going to be Morty hey. Kaiser. He's going to. I can do this! <laughs> <laughs> no, support I'm pretty meta. I got Leona and Valkas. But um, the other roles. I like to ma- change it up a little bit. <laughs> I love it in the Vel- chat. Velkaz is not su- is not a support. He's not not a <laughs> that was champion. A joke, I know. <laughs> Sorry to break it up a little bit. I think it's just funny in the chat right now. They're ranking everybody based on their looks. Like huh? <laughs> they're ranking everybody on the podcast right now based on the looks because uh, because uh, Chira is no longer the cute one on the podcast because he shaved his beard. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm the smooth one on the podcast now. <laughs> I don't know. I can't grow anything. Yeah, I think your five o'clock shadow 
little more rough than mine. But... Who's the? I don't know who's in bottom right though. I can't. That's me. Nice. Uh, bottom right uh, is the claw. Top left is Chira. Middle is Days. Bottom left is no. Top Ch right is Chira. Yeah, that's what I said. So he's cute. I'm the cute one. Oh. <laughs> All right, hey, we'll baby. Move on. Uh, Nathaniel <laughs> writes: When should I buy Maw over Mercurial? Anybody want to take that one? I won't give that one. I got it. I promise. You most of the time. You should buy Maw uh, as a uh, as a top laner in most cases. And like Mercurial, you should always get Mercurial as your as a marksman. Um, uh, not always, no. No, no. If you're gonna get the item, oh. Okay. If you're if you're choosing between one of those two items, you should be getting Mercurial because you're not gonna first buy it. By the time you need it, you need the magic resist, but you also need the get out like the oh shit button. Well, break it down easy to what is the enemy team doing to me? Last night, uh, for example, we played up against a frail yard comp and they had four thousand stuns. So if you're playing against a team oh that God. has four thousand stuns, you need a Those material to worst, get out of anything. Worst themed experience I've ever been a part of. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah. But, um but I what well, also look at the um look at the Maw of Malmordius, you get a Hex Drinker that can build into it, and the Hex Drinker is useful as hell as an early item. To you know, hold on like to Olaf, while you go towards the yeah, And look at the synergy with items. If you're going to build a Guardian Angel armor, that synergizes really well with the Maw as well, because the two complement each other. I mean, and even just think about it from a passive standpoint. You know, the, like, bruisers can reasonably get to low HP and still continue contributing. Marksmen tend to be either at full HP and over uh, over healing with the shield or basically dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, really Maw is a, like you said, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a top yeah, lane, it's a bruiser, it's more of a bruiser top lane item, and Mercurial really is a squishy, get out of jail free card item. And look at the look at the effects. They have different effects. Maw has that little shield, and it makes you do more damage the lower health you have. So that just synergizes well with champions like Trinomir and Olaf, who kind of live at the low life. Get area. get huge benefits for being at the low end. Right now so they're getting another huge benefit. But you have exactly. But I I I prefer Maw more just because it's cheaper. You can hold on to that hex drinker earlier, and it just seems a little bit better. Well, we'll go ahead and move on. I'm going to go to Gorath questions next because this one I think could lead to a nifty discussion. We've talked about it in the past, but Gorath writes in, best and worst case scenario, how do I stop an enemy from freezing the lane? What do I do if they are freezing the lane outside of the tower and can harass me from getting experience? So we'll, we'll, take, we'll use top lane for this because top lane is the longest lane. Your lane has been pushed toward them and they can harass you out of CS and keep the lane stuck there. What do I do? I'm not a top laner. I say you go into the enemy jungle and start fucking with them. Just just leave it. If you can't do shit there, go go be impactful somewhere else. I like to when it, when that happens to me, I I tend to use my I'll use man, I'll use abilities to secure CS. You know, I'll dart in, I'll throw a spear for Pantheon, for example. Um or I'll just soak up experience and say the hell with the uh, the last hitting because it's not worth mm -hmm. the possibility of getting killed. And it's, it's a sucky scenario, but you know eventually they will push it because they're last hitting and your minions, their minions are killing your minions, so it will push more in your favor. You know they can't really freeze it that bad. So just grit through it. It sucks seeing those uh, minions die without you last hitting them when you're like, you know, you can't go in there, but. It'll eventually come to your turret and know how to see us under the turret. Once you do that, then that's your best chance of coming back. And then, like Dom said, if there's the option to run into the jungle real quick, grab the white, go back. Or if you're on the other side, grab the golems, go back. That'll help you somewhat stay up. And I mean, you know, ideally you your jungler, jungler can come. There too. Yeah, ideally the jungler can come up and help you break the enemy. trees and everything. But that's yeah. You want to what well, you want to try to do. In that scenario, that scenario, like Declan said, that scenario sucks. That's like absolute worst case scenario. You know, you had that level three trade where whoever wins is going to win the lane. Like it happens. There are definitely tons oh, yeah. of matchups out there. And now you're playing against Nidalee, who is sitting in the bush and keeping the lane frozen, and you can't do anything. Oh, you yeah. have to tr one. You need to first look. Can I sit up in here? And well, one. I would say one. Do I have high enough life? Do I have enough potions? Can I push the lane while taking harass without dying into the tower? 
You have to know your champion. Limitation. That's a lot of, you know, a lot of checklists to go through. But can I go up there and kill the six minions that are standing right there, get it to the tower and get out so that the lane resets in the own? More than likely, one is a no for the most part. Uh, number two is can I sit back and soak up experience? Yes. Can I, you know, can I get enough experience so I have to go back? It's okay to continually go back sometimes. I'm going to be right. down. I realize I'm down. I'm down a level. If, I realize it, but yep. it's okay. If you have to teleport, you can go back and get an item, and then all of a sudden you kind of even the odds a little bit because right. they're sitting there freezing the lane, hanging out. You know, you'll have an item advantage, and then maybe you can get in there, CS, and maybe threaten. But you can also do mind games. Certain champions have a, an ability or a way to telegraph as if a gank's coming. So you can kind of do mind games to make him back off a little bit or play a little bit cautiously. For example, Volibear. I'll use my Rolling Thunder. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, just go charge in them hmm. and then turn around and hit the minion, you know, and go back and then hit another minion. And they'll back off a second or hesitate, and that's just enough time for you to get a couple CS and then back off. And you can, you can kind of play that game a little bit. Uh, Riven, you can start doing your little jumps towards and then head out of there with your, uh, your shield. So, so it yeah. sucks. It does suck, and you've got to really play some mind games if you want to get some CS, but... Well, to continue, you can with take advantage of um, bushes also. I I don't play a lot of top lane, but I do play Singed, and he has a lot of really hard match, uh, matchups really early. And even if you can't CS, you can sit in the bush, you can get that experience, and that's really important. Um, and then if you have someone like that with some wave clear, you know, you can just come into lane. For example, on Singed, you can pop your ult, go clear a couple waves, go back refill your health because they probably chunked you down and then head back to lane. So you just really have to understand your champ's strengths and weaknesses. Either you can play the gank or you can wave clear, whatever you need to do. But just try to soak up as much experience as you can. And then if you can, just roam like Dom said. That's usually what I end up doing. Also, and I just want to throw this out there, you're probably in this position because you left Nidalee open and you should have banned her. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. that, that definitely has something to do with it. Well, well, I've been in that position with a good rise who just, like Adam said, the level three, he safe. won the harass, and then all of a sudden I'm on my, my heels, and he went managed to go back, teleport back in the lane, and he's got his item. And it's like, oh, man, God, every time I try to come up, he comes up and prison QEs me, and then that's it, and then runs back and goes to a CS, and I'm, yeah. But I've well, beaten him using the in a, in a situation tactics. like that, too, if he's blown his teleport, you can always look to teleport or ask your team to drop a ward so you can teleport behind somebody in another lane and try and make some waves that way as well. And like Claude said earlier, if you do go back and you get an item and they're still freezing the lane near their turret um, after you've backed and now you can fight them toe-to-toe -to -toe and they're starting to get low on mana and they need to back, if they back and you're already there, you can just start pushing the turret. So it's not... If you go back and you can get an advantage out of backing and you're getting nothing out of being there, it's more important to go back so you can come to your lane and then deal with them or you know sweep the lane if they get to back themselves and they just leave a wave at their turret they're missing xp anyway so well i think my final point here with all of that is to learn to be carried now, we've said it in the past but it's okay you lost top lane Don't you die. lost it hard you can't use teleport to go anywhere you have to keep using teleport to go back up there to the tower gets pushed out uh, you know, this is going through your head. Is it right or is it wrong? Who knows? But we all have been there where we're like, I have to go up top, but I'm going to die if I go up top. So you just have to learn to play safe, stand in the back, and tell your tell your jungler, listen, I can't do anything. If you want to come up here and help and get me the lane back, we might be able to do something. Otherwise, don't ever come top. Leave me alone. I'm going to lose my lane. You need to make stuff happen everywhere else in the map. That's that's a good point. You know, you're losing your lane. You, let's say you're playing a jungler. You see your top is losing the lane. You're like, oh, I got to go help him. A lot of times it's going to be a bad idea. You know, oh, yeah. you're baiting him to go in like, oh, shit, my jungler's helping. I better try to get an assist, and then they'll kill him. It turns him into a double kill. Get out of there. Right. <laughs> or double, double kill. Or they the get person you. who's already ahead. Yeah, they get the weak one, and then they have enough to where they can get out of there because they're snowballing and getting ahead. So leave them alone. Let top lane sit there and just, like Adam said, learn to be carried, don't die, hold your lane. Keep, maybe you can attract jungler attention because you're an easy target, which I've seen a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> but when I'm losing top lane, all of a sudden the jungler's diving me too. And it's like, well, spend your time here. Come on, guys, go dragon. You know, and Hope everyone you else wins their lane. Yeah. 150, 20 gold. <laughs> and then that top laner that kicked your ass is in the end screen saying, uh, useless team. You know, he's raging at his team because he knows he did well. But, you know. So, there, it's not though. the end of the world. Communicating with your team, though, like if you're a jungler and you're going to leave your top lane 
and he's died and he's asking for help, just communicate like why you're not coming up. That if you come up, you're not going to be able to beat them. If the jungler comes up, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Just try to keep your teammate in the loop so that you don't seem like you're just blatantly ignoring them, which is just going to irritate them in the end. So, Day, should I say, no, fuck you. You've lost your yeah. lane. You're fucking worthless yeah, pile Yeah, that's of- what Adam <laughs> does. Adam's just like, you're bad. I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not wrong. <laughs> I mute Adam every game. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best for in everybody. game and in Skype. I'm not yep. that bad anymore. <laughs> uh, wait, we know what we didn't ask. I think this is a question that we should have asked, and I feel just terrible. Is that uh, Ponophobia writes in? So, Days, it's your first day on the podcast. What are you drinking tonight? Oh, I I've been drinking for a while now. <laughs> yeah, um, I was girl. drinking Blue Moon and Jack and Coke because yeah. Wow, um, she's hit. I was hard. required to drink. Before I came on, Tough that's life. how it works. Oh yeah, was that? <laughs> is that the criteria? Adam told me I was required. Well, that's what I told Dom too, and Dom said, "Well, that's not even a problem." <laughs> yeah, Adam told me that on my first just, podcast, and I ended up singing I, "Little Mermaid" or something. I, was I just wasted on the first time I showed up, but I wasn't even like I. That was you not having Hornet and Wrecker and the, and like panicking. Eh, thankfully, I don't have to panic anymore. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move down to another one because... It's a good question, uh, though, Gorath. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Gorath. And hopefully we answered that question. If you guys have any more you want to... Sorry, if you want to expand on that, uh, please write in. So I'm going to skip down one more question here, and we'll get back to the other two. Bozo writes in, Can you give me tips for playing in a 2v2 lane? Dom and Days, these, this is your baby of a question you right here. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just not, yeah. I'm just not qualified to do this. <laughs> Well, okay, let's um, talk about this. From a support point of view, besides warding for information, what is your primary goal in lane, and what are some tips that you don't see supports do that they should be doing? Um, I think the biggest thing that I see done incorrectly on both support and ADCs is that you're not posi- positioning correctly in with your other teammate. So one of you will be really far up, the other one will be really far back, and then you'll go to harass, and the person who's really far up will get harassed by both of the opposing teammates, and then your teammate can't do anything about it. So you always want to stay like pretty much parallel to whoever your lane partner is. Um, so if you're playing support, then wherever your ADC is, you want to be in line with them, and you want to just imagine like there's a circle around them that's where their range is and where their um, spells can go, and you just want them to overlap as much as possible so that if you get harassed, your ADC can respond to it, or if you're the ADC... If you're getting harassed, and your um, support can respond and CC. That's the biggest problem that I see usually in bot lane. And that's if you take advantage of that, like if you're in bronze or silver, if you take advantage of that, you can climb pretty easily just by engaging on whoever's out of position. I mean, yeah, zone control is really, really big, and that extends far beyond just keeping control of the lane brush. Um, I think a lot of people have it in their heads that if they can't get into the lane brush, they don't re- like they know it's going to be a controlled zone, so they don't need to throw a ward or even try to get in there. They're just going to let the opponent have it. It's like no, that in, like knowing where they, exactly where they are in that brush is key because it allows you and your teammate to position properly. It I, also gives you a ward for your top laner to teleport to, um, which is uh, severely underappreciated. I don't know how many times I scream at bottom deep lanes, wards. too. I yep. need deep ward. If you are up there and you know you're going to get pushed back, drop a deep ward in that bush because uh, I think last night I said, hey, can you guys get a deep ward in there? Let them push back. And it turned out to you know be uh, advantageous for us, but those deep wards in those bushes and allowing the enemy team to push back is, is just so fantastic for any kind of top laner. I mean, it, and it, it uh, like like just having that information ends up being a really big deal. The deep wars are also great because you get information about incoming enemy ganks. You can't always get it, but you should have the ward there anyway because there are few things worse than thinking you have a good kill opportunity and then a jungler shows up that you should have known about. Like the only right. reason you like if you don't. If the jungler shows up because you're out of wars and it's been forever since you've gone back to base and your trinkets are on cooldown, okay, that is not great, but at least you have a, a decent excuse. You know, you didn't have an opportunity to return to base. 
if you have wards available, you should have you should usually have one in a lane brush and then one in one of the river spots. You can go crazy and put three in there, but either tri brush or the river br- you know the the river area are the the two river spots that you should be looking at. Um, from there, I mean, days hit it on the head with the zone control. You really just need to be mindful of what your teammate is capable of doing. Um, and and staying within that leash, I think, is the right term for it. I really like Keep- asserting my dominance as a support on most supports that I play. Even if I'm a squishy, like somebody like Karma, I like to stand in front of my ADC a little bit. No, no, no. You, you don't need to be parallel to one another. You right. just need, like, I mean, it, well, it I, does no good if you like are... Like says, if, imagine those little rings. Right. Yeah, it no does no good if you're last hitting kind of near the tower and I'm up in the, the far river sure, brush. Sure, sure, sure. Because I'm just going to get jumped on there. That's all she's talking about. Well, well, I think you just be need to be close up. enough to respond to each other. If you can't respond to each other, then you might as well be in a 1v2 lane. Right. You're well, my point like- is, I like I, as a support, I agree with you. You should be within a circle of your ADC, preferably within the first half of the circle. Or is it ellipses? Or, you know, like in, in the front half of the wherever they're facing. You shouldn't be behind your ADC at any point. Um, but I really like to play forward as in, as a support because I think too many people get scared by having that person just walking at you. A lot of people don't know to auto-attack the Thresh that's walking at them. They just expect a Thresh to sit in a bush and drop a hook. But now I'm walking at you and I've flayed you. Oh, my hook is still up and you flashed. You know, that type of thing. Like People don't expect out of the ordinary plays because so many people are so many people play the champs at such an average level where they they rely on the primary engage rather than using the primary as the secondary engage and and uh, building on that adam <laughs> the um when you are just walking at somebody to, you can zone them out of cs so watch the enemy watch your own friendly i'm sorry minion health bars when you see him getting low you know the adc is going to try to skirt in and get a quick hit to get the last hit. They're trying to farm. They're concentrating on last hits. So watch your friendly minion health bars and as Leona hit your W eclipse and run at them and they'll they'll miss it and then run away so you don't hit any of the enemy minions with it. And do little things like that or use that as your cue to engage cuz you know they're going to move up a couple squares to get that last hit. Mm-hmm. So you can hit them with your zenith blade and then stun whatever you got to do. So watch the the health bars. Adam, I think it's funny that you said that too because the first thing I thought when I read this question is if I'm playing support I just want to appear to be as big of a threat as possible and all <laughs> well, I'm seeing in my head is like those National Geographic like specials <laughs> with those birds that are trying to puff themselves up as much as possible <laughs> like trying to scare the hell out of other things it's like I don't know why and you're, you're, you're correct to want to do that but you have to read the enemy opponent if they start <laughs> punishing you for just being a little bit out in front you need to adjust your strategy otherwise you're going to end up dying right like it's one thing if they're always running away from you just be- just because they're way too worried about your harass but uh, then you should you know continue to assert your uh, your authority there but if they just turn around and start hitting you with abilities and, and uh, sending the harass right back at you you haven't really gained anything there you've taken sure. damage and uh yeah, I mean, they called your bluff. Right. Yeah, you know, no, I, I, had that, that. I had that in a lane. I had that an enemy thresh who was doing that. They were He was being real annoying, running out way ahead, doing the flay, holding his, you know. And he was, you know, my, I was keeping back. I was playing marksman. And I was like, you know what? F this. He's out of position. And I just opened up on the guy. And eventually he had to back early because we and destroyed him. And then he him. doesn't he do that doing again. That. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped doing that. Days and that we ended up point. in the lane. Yeah, not only that, like... You have to read your enemy opponent, but you also have to read your lane partner. So if you're not doing with someone, if you're out in front and they're not following up or they're not harassing, then you're just going to die. So if you have a good ADC who's going to follow up on you, or if you're the ADC and you're up and harassing and your support's going <laughs> to and your support's going to follow up, then that's one thing. But if you're like with someone who's not comfortable with ADC and it's taking all of their concentration of farm and you're up there harassing, you're just going to die. So you need to, <laughs> there's a lot to keep in mind um, in that situation. And you're, you kind of have to adjust to it because yeah, in bronze and silver, you can probably stand on top of the enemy ADC and you probably won't get punished for it. But <laughs> as you go up higher and higher, um, people that. are going to know, people are going to know how to deal with you and they're going to recognize when you get out of position and, um, that's probably the easiest way to get a lead in bot lane is to just wait for someone to get out of position and punish them for it because they're going to be afraid the rest of the lane that you're going to do it again. 
Um, I think we do need to move into talking about ADCs a little bit down here in the 2v2 since it is a partnership. And the ADCs positioning matters just as much as the supports Absolutely. positioning. And with an ADC, depend, there's going to be... I like to look at the bottom lane and phases with ADCs because every ADC, there is a strong, weak, extremely strong, and then it could be anywhere from weak to still strong phase. Does that make sense? Or it could be strong, weak, strong again. Like the, everybody has some kind of phase where they go in and out of strong or weak. So, you know, power spikes? Well, yeah, power spikes. Uh, but it, power spikes with ADCs are usually items. There are levels, but well, like the first six levels are power, uh, the big power spikes for ADCs. And after that, it's items. Well, like Tristana and Grays get way bigger power spikes oh, than yeah. Oh, yeah. Ash. Until Ash hits six. Right, right. And until Ash gets to a team. <laughs> but yeah, with the power spikes and ADCs, like, something that you need to be aware of as, a, as an ADC is... Th- z- I've always looked at bottom lane as having three zones. Uh, there is zone A, which is the middle zone around the bushes. And then we can do, like, zone B, which is the zone just outside your tower. And zone A, which is just outside their tower. And you need to know how to play differently based on what where you are standing the zone. I, the A, B, C. You can go, you can go A, B, C. <laughs> but you, you spend most of your time in zone A. That's why I picked the middle one as zone A. Because you spend most of your time standing in the middle of the lane playing. And you want to stand behind minions. That's, like, your number one thing as an ADC is you want to stand behind or use minions to your advantage. No matter Don't. where you're standing at. Don't stand still when you're standing behind the minions because all you've done is made the enemy support's job easier. Yeah. Unless you're you're doing that as a way to 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 dodge skill shots. Sure. I mean, you're going to have to stop the auto attack and everything, but if you you just stand there for two seconds more waiting, or just like stand there and you keep auto attacking or something like that, I'm going to start throwing all of my abilities at you. And you're probably going to die because yeah. you're a squishy marksman. And right. if you're an ADC, you should really practice um, pushing the lane to get level two first. Um, it That matters in every lane, but especially in bot lane when you have an extra teammate to get that level two first before your other teammates is easily... Tell us how to get level two first because there's, there's oh. a... Uh... Right, so there's an equation for that. Right. Um, so you want to, you just want to auto attack as soon as you get into lane. You want to auto attack all of your um, minions. You want to do the first wave and then the three melee of the next wave, and that will give you level two. And you can communicate to your support to have them help you a little bit too, to push that wave if your enemy support is. And then make sure you tell them to ward river because that's really important because you'll be pushing. But if you get level two by getting those minions, then you'll easily um, be able to blow a flash or get a kill. There's actually a more advanced strategy for getting level two, and that's taking out the first two big minions first, and then taking out something like the back three and letting the lane and letting the wave come to you again, and then taking out two right. or three more minions, and you you literally have three seconds maybe to hit level two before the enemy does. But that three seconds you have, if you are on the same page as your support, is, is enough to cause a panic. It's make or break because they, most yeah. supports have the the skills they need to kill somebody right then and there. Right. It, that's exactly that it. as long as people are. If you if you're on if you will play invent or Skype with your support, you're gonna say we're hitting level two. So you drop down the first two big minions, a couple of the small minions, let the wave come to you, and you're tr- the entire time keeping in mind that you wanna be one minion ahead of the enemy team. Or at least half a minion ahead. Even half a minion's okay. Like that's even harder to juggle, but it's all about getting your minion down that last minion down to hit level two, like they said, a wave plus three before they get their wave plus three down. And then engaging immediately. If you want to get level two first, that's that's what you see a lot of the pros do actually, because pros are so good at. Um, aggro they also or tank control. They tank minion aggro, so it doesn't hit the friendly minion, so that they right. get that extra right. health right. advantage as well. And in like bronze and silver, they're usually a little bit behind, so they're still probably pay- playing season three where you were slowly farming. You wanted to freeze the lane, like pushing the lanes, a fairly new thing, like end of season three, season four type thing. So if you get a if you're against an opponent who's not pushing the lane, it's even that much easier to get that level two first. Oh, is it ever? And then punish once you get it. Don't just right. sit there and continue. Yeah, don't let them get level two. Farming. If you get level <laughs> two, scare them off the minions and then and then yep. freeze it. Then you can freeze it. Scare them off the minions and freeze it back there. And when you level two. 
if you get level two first, that's uh, you know that's when you run way out in front of your marksman as a sport. Just like go stand in front of their minion line and dare them to fight right. you. They're not. And if they like, haven't, sorry. No, oh, go ahead. If they haven't been pushing at all, and you get level two first, you can actually scare them off of the entire rest of the minion wave because they're not even close to level two yet. Right. Oh, you can hit level three before they even hit level two with right. that strategy. It's silly what you can do in bottom lane when you are a seasoned ADC or support. But if they back off, then the lane's pushing towards them and they get free experience at the turret. So try to make the best of that level, the early level two. But they can also harass you really hard under the turret, and then as the lane pushes back because it dies all on the turret, usually at that point, if, they hit two, if two waves hit the turret, by the time the third wave comes, it's going to be back into the middle, or just outside the middle, rolling into zone A or B, you know, the, as I called it earlier. Um, Which is why I like Dave's mentioning a full wave and then three melee minions. Right. Giving you no, so you know when you're going to hit level two, know when it's going to happen, and you're not just completely pushing everything as hard as you can. And just as important, if they hit level two first, you really need to back off before they can blow your flash or kill you. Like, you have to be a little bit cautious of that if they hit it first. Even just as a general rule, it's good to know when to ease off the gas. There are a lot of right. people who think, irrespective of the, the dynamic of the lane at any point uh, prior to the moment, uh, they think that they can always be aggressive and, like, always try, you know, turn something around. And that's just not true. There are times where you got to say, you know what? They're doing better than me. I'm just going to ease off and do what I can to stay in this game because it's better to be behind on CS and still alive than it is to keep feeding deaths to the opponent. The number one thing I ever got told when I first was first learning Dota on Warcraft 3 was just don't die. Just yep. don't die. That was That's the first. I said, how do I play this game? He looked me in the eye and said, just don't die. That's all he said to me. And, you know, toss, I don't remember who it was. Just tossed me to so the So why box. didn't you tell this to Ranhurt? I have tried a thousand <laughs> times. He had the, the, turrets magnetically pull this motherfucker into him, and like he he orbits around them as he's taking turrets. So, yeah, so Azir, Azir, Azir is gonna be Azir is gonna be Ranhurt's nemesis at the end. Is what you're saying? Absolutely. It, actually, I want Riot. If you're listening, I want royalties for Azir because I was the one who came up with the turret concept. I tweeted a whole Ranhurt champion one day. <laughs> where when Red Hurt dies near a turret, the turret dies. The turret becomes uh, an enemy or a ally turret, that type of thing. And Red Hurt can the best one with the Red Hurt champion. Sorry, anybody who's never heard of him, but he always dove turrets. That was the joke. Uh, I like his still ultimate diving him to this day. Yeah. <laughs> his ultimate would spawn a turret anywhere that would always shoot him, only shoot him and kill him. But he would gain buffs while it was shooting him and killing him. <laughs> so he had to try to kill people <laughs> under the turret while he spawned it. <laughs> like, stupid shit. Anyway, we'll go ahead and move on. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sweating up a storm over here. It's warm. It's you made me here. turn my fan off. Uh, I have a window open behind me and no fan. Like, you can see the fan. It's not on. You see, see I what I do for podcasts? I, I have windows open adjacent to me, and it's still kind of warm here. I can't wait for the winter. I love I, I, I hate <laughs> love the winter. All right, so Yeezus Bound writes in, Can you briefly talk about something that you frequently see your teammates do that bothers you? Not obvious stuff like feeding, but rather situations where the person thinks he is helping but is maybe just misinformed. I think we touched on one of those earlier which is top or the jungle going to top lane when top lane is losing or any lane for right. that matter um yeah jungler or anybody ganking when the enemy has a huge minion wave in your face in the lane and they're like yeah. i'm coming in they're coming in from way behind and you're like you got to run through all those minions to get to them isn't going to be worth it they're going to kill you before you even get there that irks me it's like I mean, I'm I'm long... spamming the back ping you know I've said many times that my biggest pet peeve is uh, seeing support players who have wards in their inventory and don't place them and then like go back to base or something like that or die or, or anything like that. Those, those have long been my, that's, I mean, I brought that up like at least six other episodes. Mine is support players who think they should be split pushing a side lane because there's a giant <laughs> wave or I have been doing that lately. I, I can't stand it, and Hornet doesn't listen anymore, thank God, but he was the biggest offender of this. He would be new, new support trying to push a side lane. Like, you don't do any damage, kid. You can't push it. Go with your team. You know? I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing if you're stopping a push. 
No, even then, right. like I, I don't. Well, my my, my pet peeve okay. is support to try to stop any kind of pushes at all instead of using their utility with the team and sending off a damage who could. I mean, push if it. if all five champions on are on the map, I agree. If you if you're missing, like if two of them are dead or something like that, and like a waves need to get stopped and for whatever reason the other two champions can't do it it just it falls to the support in that situation but i don't think that's the case you're talking about no it's more or less like we're all sitting in mid lane there's four of them barreling down yeah. there's a, yeah and, then then the support has no business going down there well really you know what the, the one is is it, this happens a lot in games is where you have somebody split pushing and they now they have made a huge wave and that wave is pushing and that person who was split pushing breaks off to go meet the team so the support thinks he needs to wrap around the map and push that giant two wave back when instead you should be swapping positions with a top and a you know the support and the support right. should be using if their utility available. in mid lane like I mean, another the one support can probably get you vision in some of those areas to keep the person who's going solo safe yeah exactly another one is a jungler with blinders on who's like let's say you died or you had to back and the enemy pushed towards your turret they're getting free hits on your turret with, let's just say, even their minions if the champion's not even there. And Jung's like, nope, Dune Rates, Dune Rates, Dune Rates, Conservation, yep. Dune Rates, Dune Rates. The, the turret <laughs> said, I don't care, Dune Rates. Other I don't see anything, blah, blah, blah. That's in the same kind of tone take. as that are laners that have their blinders on when their jungler is being invaded and, like, mid lane. Yeah. The enemy <laughs> mid laner yeah, just rolls right past your mid laner into your jungle with the enemy jungler and they just keep farming and don't give a fuck. That is... Is my I got another one. Uh, I don't. I I do hate it when top laners just sit on their island for thirty minutes and then like <laughs> while the the game falls apart around hey, the rest hey, of the team. Hey, hey, hey. I'm and playing Nasus. I need my stacks. Okay. And then they come into it and they're all like, "What the fuck? Why is Vayne so bad?" It's like, well, <laughs> well it's because their team. top laner. Okay, well, was I doing will, I won my lane. Team. <laughs> <laughs> right. One of my biggest ones is the inhib for Baron trade, where people will stay really really late. They'll try to get inhib, they'll all die, and then the enemy team will get barren, and then they'll come back later in the game. Or just overstaying in general and not watching the enemy timers when they respawn. Oh, yep. Nobody watches timers, and it's bad. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, you're saying say, back and they're not. Yeah, there's right. even a piece right. of the main right. wave. I sometimes even hate getting an inhibitor so early that the enemy has a really quick respawn time, and even if you back right away, they can still go and take barren when you're sitting I mean, in health it, health. But you still have an advantage. If you, it's one if thing it's a free if, It's one thing if, in theory, like, you took the outer turret, then you took the inner one, and then you took the base turret, and, like, after each of these, it was like a team fight, you went back to base, and you just kept the siege kind of going. Um, and so you didn't really sacrifice a lot to get that inhibitor. And it's another thing if you decided to, like, overstay your welcome and try to take that inhibitor while they respawned and ran out with Home Guard and murdered you. Because, like, you know, the, the thing feet. a lot of people forget sorry to interrupt um no, go on. even if you just won a team fight you spent a lot of resources winning that team fight they're respawning with full health and full mana and also and they've also had the full opportunity downs. to purchase items they might yep. not get anything i mean in some cases they might get the upgrade that's going to to tip things in their favor and in other cases they might not get anything significant but just the fact that they're coming back with full resources while you don't have that means that in most cases you are at a significant disadvantage. And like almost that's every real crime for ever staying your welcome. In right. almost every situation, if you get an objective and then you push another one and you, you know. stay long enough for them to respawn and kill you, you way overstayed because almost always they'll have an opportunity to either get an objective or to reward their jungle, or to get barren, and it just gives them time. You gave them gold for your deaths, you gave them um, an opportunity to kind of regain control and gain momentum back a little bit. So if you're that far ahead where you're just pushing and pushing and pushing, just take the time to go back and just re, you know, get it's everybody back together. while you're at it, too. Right. Mm. If, you, like, yeah, if you die with 3,500 gold in your um, wallet... That's uh, that's really on you. Yeah, you could have gone back uh, two thousand gold ago <laughs> and picked up something that could have turned it around. So, but I, yeah, common theme is lack of communication. Um, if you notice these these things irk you because you're, let's really say you're is. trying to communicate it with a quick ping, well back yeah. ping, or uh, assist ping, whatever it might be. And I've done I've done this in the past where I've been uh, focused. I'm like, no, let me just get this last hit on this wolf. 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm attacking. <laughs> Let me just finish this <laughs> camp. Uh, and they're pinging like mad, and then, yeah, I finished the camp, but then my buddy died. You know, things like that. So move and communicate and try to be reactive, because a lot of times, even if you don't think, oh, my guys don't know what the hell they're doing, I, I'm, I'm the one who knows what I'm doing here, fuck them. No, uh, they might see something you don't. You know, if they're, they're spamming, you know, back, 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 something happened. They saw something, and, whoa, let me react real quick. You know, worst case scenario, you missed out on a wolf, you know? Uh, Best case scenario, maybe I was going to bring that, was gonna bring that up something. earlier. Where you should sometimes you should just leave a camp, even if it's a red buff, and it's at it, it's at just it's three hundred above spite damage. But that two seconds you could have saved could have cha- turned yeah. it around. Sometimes you just have to leave it. Sometimes you have to go fuck and just leave it. So mm-hmm. and <laughs> sorry, is encouraged. sorry for the dog. My biggest pet peeve of everything is GG First Blood. Oh my god, Like, yes. that's my, just any negativity. <laughs> There's nothing that can ruin. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Have you, has she played with us recently? Right, for, she hasn't played with us last month. For anybody who doesn't know, I have this joke that every time we get into a game and nothing happens at all, like there's no invader or whatever, I'll start my red buff and everybody's in their lane, I'll just be like, GG first blood. <laughs> Nothing's taken, like no dying. one dies. Or he'll be we've nowhere near dying. We've, we've all taken to saying it, like, <laughs> you'll, die for, the fifth, you'll die for the fifth time in the first game, GG first blood. <laughs> No, but today's point. Today's point. It's legitimate. It's so what you're down four kills early in the game. All right, it's over. Uh, just just wrap it up. Surrender at twenty. No, motherfucker. They they've got a Master Yi and a Nidalee, and we've got a Boo Boo Sejuani, Brom, and Lissandra. I mean, what we're gonna win this game. Day? Who was in the game the other day where I was playing Udir top into that Yasuo, and I failed to kill him at less than fifty health three times, and I was zero. Zero and four in like the first fifteen minutes, and I came back and shat on everybody. <laughs> you do that. You always do that. I I don't you know what like you dear uh, Jax. and yeah, you're your your king like asshole on that champion. Well, I have I have one more question that I want to get answered tonight because I feel that it's a very good question. So if we go over, we'll deal with it. I am bad. I feel bad. Writes in <laughs> Sean's favorite summoner that writes into us. Uh, his his long his long winded story here is essentially there was a fed Leona in the game that kept diving and killing people because she was so fed she was support but she was so fed that that's all they could target and he wants to know do you ever feel it's okay to focus the tank if he or she is carrying or was I wrong should I always focus the ADC regardless okay so if a tank is fed. That's basically a nightmare scenario because you you don't want to pull that champion into your team because you're not going to kill him quickly. Um, But you also can't ignore the champion because, you like, tons of crowd control, probably good sustained damage along the way and everything. I mean, that's the nightmare situation that you're running into. Um, The, the, (laughs) as, okay, if you're an ADC or you are a mid laner, you hit what you can hit. Mid laners have a little bit more leeway because they can save their spells and they have spells that they can toss off to kind of do AOE damage. Targets of opportunity. But an ADC, you hit what you hit. Do you know how many times I've only been able to smack a Leona and then I clean up for the last three or four because my team killed the primary target, which was their enemy ADC because they dove it? It's better than not attacking anything because they're not there. You You are never, as an ADC, you are never, ever, ever going to make it through that front line and hit that enemy ADC, unless the enemy ADC is out of position. And if you I do mean, go to do that, you're going to die. To this, to this support or to this question, it was like it sounded like he was uh, a support player who was um, being harassed for for pulling uh, a Fed Leona into them and everything. And it's sort of like you. That's not the champion you want to grab and pull into your team because that champion, if the champion's fed, she's going to be damn near impossible to kill and you're going to have to spend so much of your team's resources to do it that it's going to end up ca- causing trouble. I get that this was the champion that was always cleaning up fights, but if this was the champion that was always cleaning up fights, it probably meant that she was late to the show or was like specifically saving her abilities for to, clean up. to get kills. I guess part of the question I didn't bring up, he was Blitz. And mm-hmm. the Ash was yelling at him to pull the Leona and kill the Yona. So no. you were you were right in not pulling the, the excuse me. You were right for not pulling the Leona in. However, 
uh, she was wrong for not attacking Leona when the Leona was the only target she attacked. Here's it's the better to attack. The in question's the... actually the opposite. He was uh-huh. focusing the he Leona. He was focusing Leona. And oh, okay. the Ash was upset that he was focusing the Leona. Here's the, the thing. Leona. It's fine to use your CC to keep Leona at bay. Like, it's great to use your knockup, your silence, whatever it takes to keep Leona from running amok throughout your team. But I wouldn't be pulling her into your team unless, Never. like, she's just crazy out of position and their team yeah. can't respond. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if she's this, out of position and you can get a free kill on her rip and your that team is on right the same the page, woods. yank this, her out. But if your team's sitting there like, oh, it's Leona, I don't care if the enemy well, team's top lane I mean, this, and she's the only applies, one bottom lane, we're not attacking her. That's this bad. applies across the board. I mean, there's a reason Munda was so strong. I mean, still is strong and everything. It's because the later the game goes, the harder he becomes to kill, which means, like, you... To do anything to Mundo, you have to spend a lot of resources. And meanwhile, he's just going to stand there and deal damage to you. Yeah. Well, okay. To the to the point of the question, he's saying that uh, Ash was yelling at him to attack the Leona. There's only so much. If you're listening to this and you were in this game, there's only so much blitz or anybody can do to peel. Uh, Example: Last night we played an Aram with Dom, and Dom was getting dove by three champions, but our team comp in the Aram didn't allow us to have peel. All we had was engage. Right. And I, you just have to kind of look at it and go, I'm sorry, we're probably going to lose these team fights, or we're going to win them and you're going to die. But we can't right. peel them off you because if we spend... I think spend that was our- Days. I wasn't. I was oh. getting dope. Days was quirky. I was Kazakh. Right, right. But well, if, I, if we spend our resources to peel off of you, that means they engage, which means they had the opportunity to engage which was advantageous for them to start the fight. So now we're trying to scramble to pick up. So you need to use what you have to make it advantageous for your, you know, if you are down, you have to be, you have to use every ability you have in the most advantageous way you can. Malphite cannot counter engage intuitively. Right. As well as he can engage. uh, And their team was so well equipped equipped to just ignore our engage all of them could just run run past all of us in the crowd control blink or bounce past in most cases and just it's like the targets of opportunity for us at that point then were Tarek and garen good luck killing them right getting back to this question (laughs) i think the, the whoever wrote in and whoever was playing blitzcrank i think that for the most part they they did well. I, I think they made the smart choice for this. I would not have grabbed Leona into the team, but if you're focusing your CC to keep the person that's dominating your team from continuing to dominate your team and allowing your team to sort of clean up the rest of the fight around them, you're doing the best you can do in that situation. You're doing your job as the support. You're keeping Leona from killing your carry. If the If your AD carry is pissed off at you, for not running past Leona as she's barreling in for for Ash, for you to go knock up their AD carry, they're just silly. I mean, and, and that's yeah, uh, you're alone. That, yeah, that's kind of a about- Blitzcrank specific point and everything. Like, if you are just if you're if you're picking up the game or you just hit thirty and everything, you're trying to figure out who you want. And you think Blitzcrank is really cool? That's great. Blitz can do a lot of fun, unique things. And you, it doesn't matter how many amazing hooks you hit. If you make one bad hook, your team is going to lay into you for the rest of the game because of it. I would <laughs> yep, like to challenge, just the reality. I would like to challenge everybody who plays Blitzcrank to start playing him a little bit differently, and that is to be save out of hook. position and save the hook to pull somebody off Away. rather than saving the hook to engage. That was actually right. that was another point I wanted to bring up. It would have been just as smart to See, to reposition somebody as it would have to take them into your yeah. team. If you are That's... on blue side, well, sorry Dump. If you are on blue side near the turret, you can actually walk around to the right into the jungle and pull somebody off of the turret into the into your jungle. And now they are out of the fight for the next five seconds as they have to walk back around or more. I mean, and so are you, but that's a different thing altogether. Like the issue with that strategy, and and I agree with you in theory, um, but the issue is that your team is usually going to be relying, like waiting for you to, uh, to hook somebody. Like as far as your team is concerned, even if you have not been playing that way, your team thinks you are the go button in that regard. So they're going to be waiting for hooks and then they're going to get upset when hooks didn't happen. And then they're going to get upset when hooks happen, but it's the tank. Um, you can't win when you're playing Blitzcrank. (laughs) I want to challenge anybody who's playing Blitzcrank and doesn't, uh, doesn't understand why you should be pulling his Blitzcrank, understanding what you should be pulling to play him the opposite of how he should you know, how, how you feel he should be played. 
and that's that's peeling. Thresh is even that way now. Thresh isn't used as a primary engage anymore. Thresh is used as a disengage with flay, box, and hook. I mean, if you can, like, if you have a good chance to hook somebody, you hook them. But that's the the abilities on a long cooldown in all these cases and everything. Even Morgana's binding is on a long cooldown and everything. Like, you can't just recklessly. You're scarier if the ability is available than if it's on cooldown. If it's if it's on cooldown, they're probably just gonna fucking run. It at means you and more you. for the enemy to worry about you casting it rather than casting it hitting nobody right. and them knowing it's not up. Oh my god, yeah, you can play so many mind games with stuff like that. Well, that's yeah. all the, go, going back earlier with Thresh and any of those it, it, Blitzcrank, same way. You could walk up and just fist somebody in the face, power fist them and knock them up in the air. Yep. Uh, Thresh can flay first, Leona can stun and then Zenith Blade, for example. Or, yeah, you know, there's, and when you do that, it's funny to watch them run is, zigzags, <laughs> expecting you to throw it. Power hook is the, uh, is the ideal way to use that right. champion's ability. Like, the, the CC is longer and more reliable. Well, especially if, say, you knock somebody up, they burn a flash because they're afraid of you, and then you just hook them right back to where they're at. That's just straight... Uh, yeah. Kill potential. Alistar, right same right. way. Alistar, walk up, pulverize, headbutt them back toward the AD carry. Yes, oh, yeah. it's flashy and awesome to be able to do that mini Malphite alt, but the proper way to play him is to Q and then W. I gotta, I gotta go, go on a tangent here. Uh, I randomly got swapped Alistar in a in an ARAM the other day, which was just you know like Christmas Day nice. for me. Uh, I tried the <laughs> Emperor Cowpatine build. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to come to Glod. <laughs> oh. That is the that is the way to do it. Was this it. before they got rid of the headbutt? <laughs> no, auto? no, no. This was this was like two days ago. It's still a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but the headbutt auto was really it was way better. It, it was it was oh, yeah. way better just because you headbutt auto and then you, you see them land away from they you fly and all away, of a sudden you see the splat appear on them. The, the, do you see the <laughs> lightning the shoot out of your hand? <laughs> and the sheen proc and their health just good. You know, I. Uh, it's, it is, but it is fun I, regardless. I finished that game tied for the most kills, fewest nice. deaths, and most assists on my team. That's a awesome. fun build. That's a well, fun way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and, and start wrapping up this podcast. Uh, Days, how was your first podcast with the Trinity Force podcast? It was good. It was oh, fun. Overwhelming? Uh, a little. Just well, just <laughs> but it was well. good. You stick it around, was fun. Show up next yeah. time? Yeah. I, I have Sweet. to. I made you guys wait for like three months. You so. have a contract? <laughs> well, she's got the nice equipment. I sent that to her like a month ago, and she could have mm-hmm. just all that for it. And the nice the 1080p camera, mm-hmm. so we can all see the, her. And, the uh, fans in the chat said that she needs to play a movie on mute in the background so they can guess what it's going to be. I was supposed to play X-Men for Adam, actually. Oh, yeah, she was! Because <laughs> we got in a call last night to, to go over this stuff, and she had and her kids were watching X-Men last night. Sit yeah. in there. <laughs> if you watch, if you put Frozen on, I I won't be able to contribute to the podcast. Dob will just break out. <laughs> Do now, you want to? Yeah, I'll be singing. So we'll sing the whole thing while it's going. It'll be great. It'll just break. Tune right in out. Wednesday we'll for Frozen, <laughs> starring the Trinity Force podcast. We're, <laughs> we're to do a Disney marathon. Thanks fuck. to Days. <laughs> right. Don't just don't You're be Lion King. Listeners who record it and use it to pirate the movie <laughs> afterward. No, right. you know what's gonna happen is Daisy's gonna play Lion King. We're gonna stop and go. Mufasa. <laughs> 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 the best line in that movie is when Mufasa like scares the fuck out of somebody. He's like, nobody messes with your old man, and then he dies right after. It's so depressing. Oh God! Oh. God. Uh, you just spoiled it for the people who've never seen that movie. I know. They'll live. they'll live. If they haven't seen it by now, they... <laughs> Unlike no, Mufasa, they'll live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that is episode number 192 of the Trinity Force Podcast. Thank you all for supporting us. Don't forget to go check out the website, trinityforcepodcast.com. We will come out with a new episode every Monday and Wednesday. The next time that we... You know what? I suspect the next time that we'll miss an episode. Sorry about Labor Day, by the way. I didn't really get to apologize for that. That was just kind of like a spur of the moment. Couldn't get anybody on. The next time I suspect we miss an episode will probably be around Thanksgiving. And then Christmas again, we'll probably miss one at at the most. So um, that is it. Thank you, Days, for joining us this week. And we look forward to having you back on Wednesday and every every episode here on out. Thank you. Yep, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. All right, guys, everybody go follow at Days Untold on Twitter. Tell her how awesome she did, and we will see you all on Wednesday for episode 193. Peace. Until next time. War.